All right, so I'm gonna be showing how to open up and disassemble this Dell Inspiron 15 model 3567. All right, so we're going to need a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver. Okay, and first thing we're going to do is remove the battery. So just slide this tab to the side. This battery was, the original battery wasn't charging, so this is actually a replacement battery. Uh, let me see if it shows the model. So the model number of the battery is right there. <clears throat> M5Y1K, all right? Anyways, we'll set the battery aside. Let's go ahead and start removing all the screws. If you're just removing the CD drive, you only need to remove this one screw, but we're gonna be taking everything apart. Okay, let me see if there's anything else in here. Okay, nope. All right, so the computer's off. <clears throat> Usually to make working on these extra safe, you wanna press and hold the power button for about 15 seconds after removing the battery. That will drain any residual power and it reduces the risk of damaging, especially if you're um, removing the screen cable or anything like that. All right, so there we go. Close this up. <clears throat> now we're going to just go ahead and remove all the screws. You wanna keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like this on my desk in the pattern I remove it. That way when I go to put it back, I will know there's one, two, three, four along this row, and then I'll put one here, and then two here, and then four down here. So that's how I kind of align it. It's easier to do it in rows. All right, if this video helps you out, <clears throat> make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Um, these are customer computers, so keep that in mind. By the time you see this video, I most likely won't have the laptop anymore. And also, because they are customer computers, I can't do complete teardowns because there is added risk. And if anything were to happen to the computer, it will be on me. And if they need it back right away, that'll be bad. They'll wonder why other components are broken or why it's taking so long. So... Anyways, let's go ahead and continue removing all the screws here. Okay. Got four more. Um, it looks like three of the screws are shorter than the rest. So if you did somehow manage to mix them up and didn't um, keep them all in order or you knocked them over or something, then it looks like the CD drive and then the two back here are shorter than the rest. But again, it's always a good idea to keep them all in order and put them back exactly where you got them. Okay, so there we go, all the screws are removed. Now we're going to remove the CD drive. I usually just use my fingernail and go up and down here and it will basically wiggle this out. If it doesn't come out, which right now it's seeming like it's kind of stuck, um, what you can do, you can get a needle or a bent out small paper clip. Okay, and on the side here, there's a little hole, okay? You can actually get the needle into that hole and then you kind of just wiggle it around and it'll pop the CD or optical drive out. Once you do that, um, open it all the way as far as it goes, then you can grab the rails and you can use that to help you pull it, okay? So there we go. And we'll just close this and put that away. Um, this does look like the thinner, I think it's like nine millimeter or 9.5 millimeter, I don't know. Um, but you can replace that with another hard drive adapter and you can put another hard drive in this slot. It's a two and a half inch SATA hard drive. Um, they probably have adapters for SSDs as well now, but, um, yeah, most people would just get the hard drive adapter for the SATA hard drive. All right. So if you're going to open this now, you want to be very careful. I'm actually going to put the two screws in here just to help so that there's, um, no risk of the hinge breaking. So I'm gonna put these screws in here. Um, hopefully you actually watch through to this part because some people just fast forward over the screws. Um, but yeah, if you do that, you're gonna open it very carefully because the hinges will have less screws holding it down inside. And I've seen people break the hinges, not even when they took the screws out. Sometimes it's just the design is bad. All right, anyways, there's three more screws under here. I think we have to switch to a pH zero, actually. Oh, no, actually we can remove these. Okay, so don't forget these three screws underneath the CD drive. 
slot as well. If your PH1 or JAS1 screwdriver won't work, you might have to switch to a PH0 or JAS0 screwdriver. But if you do use that, make sure to keep a lot of pressure down into the screw because you don't want to strip out the, the screw heads. Okay, so now that we've got all those screws out, let's go ahead and open this up. Okay, I'm going to open it. If I remember correctly, on this model, we might have to also remove the keyboard. So let's go ahead and see if we can get the keyboard out as well. Um, usually to do that, you want a thin uh, pry tool. doesn't have to be metal, but usually that works best. You can actually see the little clips or latches there. Let me zoom in a bit more. Okay. So you can actually see the, the clips where it's holding into place. I like to kind of start closer to the middle. And then I just get the thing in there. You can see it's lifting up. I'll hold that up. Go over to the next one. Same thing. Next one. Same thing. All right. And we'll just do the rest. Okay. You don't need to use a lot of downward pressure. As you kind of wiggle this, it kind of falls into the right place. Then what you got to do is you pull down on the sides and then pull up. So we're basically flexing it like this. Okay, and that allows the keyboard to unlatch from the sides here. Okay, so just like that. Okay, we're basically bowing the keyboard outwards. So like that. Once you get it up partially, you're going to pull it this way. And carefully tilt it forward. <clears throat> Flip this latch up. Let me actually zoom in a bit here. Okay, we're going to flip this latch up. Sorry. And once you flip that up, you can actually lift the cable slightly up and pull it back. All right, so just like this. And there we go. Okay, here's the keyboard. You do want to check your own keyboard. There are There's actually no screws on the back of the keyboard. So if you just need to replace the keyboard, you don't need to remove any of the bottom screws. Um, you can re remove the battery to be safe, but usually you don't need to remove the battery for the keyboard either. <coughs> either. All right, so there's the keyboard model information if you want you can check your keyboard and then just look that up on ebay or something sometimes you can find it on amazon all right you got the connector here for the optical disk drive or the cd drive we're going to flip this up this one you want to be a little bit careful when removing the cover because it will thread through here so keep that in mind all right we're going to take this cable out excuse me all right, now let's go ahead and take all the screws out that are in here. So we got one up here. Again, keep all the screws in order. These screws are different size and shape and length of the other ones from the bottom. So if you mix them up, you can damage your computer, okay? Got a second one over here. Okay, got a third one down here. Okay, and then you got two here. So we got this one up here. And this one down here. Okay. So now that we got all those screws out, I'm going to flip this over and remove the two um, screws that I left on the bottom here. Uh, it helps to kind of hang the screen off the edge of your desk when you're doing this so that you have better access. All right. So keep that in mind. Okay, and again, try not to mix up the screws. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and see about, oh, I took out that screw too. Sorry, it wasn't in view of the camera. So let's go ahead and see about popping this cover off. Usually what I do is I'll grab in here and see, let's see if we can pop it up that way. If it doesn't separate from this side, we're probably gonna have to go from the bottom. Yeah, this side, it's not unclipping. Okay, so. Again, now that all the screws are out, the hinge screws are out, you want to be careful opening and closing the hinges. Um, I actually hold from both sides like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how we can pop this out. If the bottom pops out or if we have to pop it out from the top. Okay, it pops out from this bottom side. So you get between the base cover and then the flat or the front side of the palm rest assembly. And you don't want to push on the trackpad, so we're only pushing here. You don't have to use fingernails, of course. You can use pry tools if you want, but I find this is easiest. I don't have to have additional tools that I need to work around and maneuver. Okay, so we're just kind of going around here and popping this out. Let's go around the side. There we go. 
this front is being a little more difficult, so I'm probably going to have to hold this out and then hopefully we can pop it. Did I miss a screw here or anything? No? Okay. So we're going to continue trying to pop this out. Again, be careful not to push onto the trackpad. You don't want to push that through the computer. So here we go. It's popping out. I'm going to go down around the side edge here. Okay. Part of it came out. It helps to kind of hold it pulled out while you're kind of prying up on here. Okay. So we're just going down the edge. <clears throat> Okay, let's go around here and continue. So here you can see it's actually separating from this metal metal piece here. Okay. All right, I'm gonna continue prying up to here. Sorry, it's hard to get this in view, but come on. Man, this edge is kind of tough to pull out. Okay, well, let's go ahead and work our way up back to here again. Okay, I don't know why it's stuck so strong here. Remove five screws under the keyboard. Oh, they even tell you to remove the five screws under the keyboard here, which I did. So, yeah, but I don't know. It's not wanting to pop out completely on the back corners. I might have to do it with the screen closed, so we're going to carefully close the screen. Okay. Again, you want to be very careful when opening and closing this because the hinge screws are out. Okay. <clears throat> Just like that. All right, and let's continue working our way to see if we can pop this out. So, okay. Come on. It doesn't want to pop out at the back. <clears throat> Maybe I have to kind of pull it up and wiggle it a bit more. These clips here are always really strong, and that's usually what ends up holding it really tight. So there we go. We had to kind of pull it. I used my palm to kind of push it like that, and that got it to pop up. Again, remember, the optical disk drive cable <coughs> runs excuse me, <coughs> underneath through the keyboard, so you want to be careful not to just pull the cable out really hard because that can uh, rip that cable, so you want to be careful. I've never had that cable rip before, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. Okay, so let's go ahead and carefully lift from this side. As you can see, this side is still not wanting to come up. So, probably have to lift it a bit more. I'm gonna lift from this side while we're kind of lifting, and there we go, to help twist this plastic piece out from the clip. And now all that's left are these back clips, it seems. So, I don't know why it's stuck so strong. It shouldn't be. I don't want to have to use the metal tool, but I might have to. As you can see, it's like really stuck here. Okay, so I'm carefully opening this. Here you can see the cable there in between the two pieces. Right there. Okay, so you can see it's pulling out. So you want to be careful again not to just yank this out. <clears throat> okay, let me try and get my... Can't even do it with my fingernail back there. So, I don't know what's holding on to this. It's pretty tough. Okay, even like wiggling it like this, it's not moving anywhere. Okay, let's go ahead and try with the metal tool then to get, if I can even get it in the gap. There we go. Yeah, even with the tool in the gap, it's not... Releasing. Oh, there we go. Okay, we got the clip up. Again, we're going to be careful opening this. I'm going to lift it slightly over to this direction because that's the way the cable is going. Okay. And there we go. <clears throat> so here you can see there's the optical disk drive cable. And when you put it back, you do have to thread it through there. So keep that in mind. All right. Looks good. <clears throat> Looks pretty clean in here too. The fan is pretty clean. So pretty well kept there's not much dust or anything in it <clears throat> all right so one thing I noticed actually let me zoom out a bit so you can see the whole thing at once and then I can use that as a thumbnail okay so we'll put this right there okay so that will be used as a thumbnail 
<clears throat> as you can see, there's actually two slots for RAM. A lot of people ask me how many slots there are. I don't know. Some people aren't able to tell that there's two slots here. Anyways, let's go ahead and pull the tab side. The RAM stick will usually pop up like this, and then you can pull it out. Here you can see the RAM is PC4 2400T. All right. This is an 8 gig stick. If you want, you can add another 8 gig stick PC4 2400T, and that will speed it up um, a little bit. But the biggest upgrade you can do is to replace the hard drive with an SSD, which I made a video of already. So, or yeah, I made a video on how to clone the hard drive to the SSD. That way you can upgrade it um, without having to do a clean install or manually doing other stuff. There is software you can use to um, do the upgrade, like after you already install the SSD, if you connect the hard drive externally but then those are paid software that costs a lot i use that sometimes um, just because i don't have to install software on other people's computers so here you have also the cpu um, it's soldered or yeah it's um, soldered to the motherboard or i forgot what the actual term is but they they melt the solder balls to it so it's basically you can see these little dots here the chip is soldered down onto that so you can't replace it you can't upgrade it um, technically, if you have the right tools, you can, but um, nobody's going to be putting in that into their computer. All right, you got the fan here. It looks like only two screws holding it in. I don't know if there's anything going under. Again, I don't want to mess around. You got this connector that usually you just grab by the wings here, and you just wiggle it, and eventually it will pop out. Better make sure it doesn't come out. Wireless card is right here. If you need to remove that, it pops up slightly at an angle, just like the RAM. You can slide this plastic piece off, and then the antennas you pull up from the tails, it'll pop them out. LCD LVDS connector here. This is for the screen. As I mentioned earlier, you want to press and hold the power button for about 15 seconds after removing the battery before you mess with this cable. You got a standard CR2032 BIOS CMOS RTC real-time clock battery, whatever you want to call it, right there. All right. This connector is for the touchpad or the trackpad. So if you wanted to disconnect that for some reason, you can. Um, the only time you would disconnect this is if you're removing the whole motherboard um, because you can't even replace the trackpad unless you do that. All right, you got this cable running underneath the hard drive over to the I.O. board, which is for the USB uh, headphone jack and the SD card slot. And then you have um, the power button with a cable right here. So if you break the power button, that's nice. You can replace it. Again, as I mentioned, um, the hinges, you can see there's only two screws holding here and one screw holding here. So if you open and close this and you're not careful, this can actually break at these plastic points because um, the screws are only holding on this thin spot like that. So when it twists, it can actually rip it out. So normally you want the whole thing um, with these screws. So that way when you open and close it, it's holding like this. So when it turns, it actually will grip everything. So keep that in mind. If you are working on this, opening and closing it, that these screws can come loose. And usually I actually will put some red thread locker there so that they don't come loose. So that's what I'm going to do. You put only a little bit and that'll prevent these from coming loose. I've seen a lot of models where these screws come a little bit loose and because of that, it ends up um, breaking itself. So, oh, my thread locker thing is somewhat clogged. So let me clean that open. Okay, give me a second. There it is. Okay. Sorry, I need a piece of paper to clean this. Okay. Just gonna clean off the end and hopefully that will unclog it. Huh, uh-oh. My thread locker is clogged. Okay, I need to unclog this, so let's poke a hole through it. Okay. Alright, so now we're gonna go ahead and put the red thread locker on here. You don't need much, not even a drop. I don't know if you can see, put very little, okay. I'm going to put this screw back in, and we're going to do this for all the internal screws just so they don't come loose. Okay. You don't have to do this, but it does strengthen the hinge um, because I have seen some of the hinges fail 
and it's pretty bad when they fail so the good thing with this model is even if you kind of break these at least you'll still have these two or these two over here um, but again it's best to also have these screws closest to the hinge where the actual hinge is which is right there all right and right here so if you break the screws it's actually um, will weaken the design quite a bit all right so keep that in mind all right so let's go ahead and put this back together we just got to put the SSD in now the customer wanted a complete clean install so that's what we're gonna do um, let me see if there's anything I missed um, you got the speaker connector here the wire goes out and then over to both speakers the speakers aren't held in with anything you can actually just wiggle them and pull them out but again I'm gonna leave them there and oh one thing I forgot to mention is the DC jack or charge port is right here held in with one screw cable runs along here and then goes under the motherboard um, I believe you can actually pull this out uh, without taking the motherboard out but it's a little bit tricky to push the new one back in because it is slightly underneath the motherboard okay um, you will have to remove this screw and flip this hinge up so that you can get underneath and pull this out but other than that I think that's all there is to this Let's go ahead now and remove the screws to swap the hard drive to an SSD. Um, the customer again is uh, asked me to do a clean install and then just migrate their data over. So that's what we're going to do. So that way they have a clean window set up. All right. So there's four screws holding this hard drive bracket into place. Okay. Probably should zoom in a bit here. Let me see if I can do that without knocking all the screws over. Okay, so we got those four screws out. Sorry, no, it's wobbling. There we go. We're gonna pop up this latch that's holding the hard drive connector in place. Okay, just like that. All right, once we got that up, we're gonna grab this, pull that out. I'm gonna lift this hard drive out and we're gonna transfer this metal bracket out which is being held in with four screws. Um, if I didn't mention already, this is a SATA 2.5 inch hard drive. Um, again, you can upgrade it to an SSD, 2.5 inch SATA SSD. Um, they do label this HDD, but that doesn't mean anything. That's just where the hard drive goes. So, yeah, they use those interchangeable solid, solid state SSD. Uh, HDD is just the, usually refers to a spinning drive, but again, um, you can have a solid state and you can just call it solid state hard drive. It, people will know what it is. Okay, so now that we got those four screws out, we're gonna flip this over and drop the hard drive out of there. Okay, so it was like that. Make sure you don't flip it over upside down. And then we're gonna pull this out. So you wanna pull this, but be careful not to pull on just the black uh, plastic part here because it can unclip and you can damage it. So you wanna make sure you're pulling on the gray part, all right? <clears throat> if it's stuck, the easiest way to do this is you pull it out slightly and then get a thin tool into this gap into this gap here where it forms okay and then you can actually pry it out from there as you can see I just used my fingernail um, but you can use whatever as you can see I pulled that out just like that by sliding my fingernail between the gap okay so we got the connector here let's go ahead and get the SSD so um, they asked for a one terabyte SSD so we got this one terabyte SSD okay if you need a link to it just let me know all right okay so we got the SSD out comes in nice packaging okay I'm gonna put their old hard drive in the packaging all right so there we go old hard drive and the SSD so we're gonna now connect the SATA connector onto the SSD just like that again be careful this cable is pretty fragile okay we'll drop this in now and we'll get these four screws back to hold the SSD into place. The SSD is a little bit thinner, so you do have to kind of hold it up so that the screws align properly, okay? And I'll usually loosely fit the screws first. That way I can get all four screws in at the same time. Uh, if you tighten it right away, you might have to loosen it so that you can align the screws. Okay, so here you can see this screw is not lining up, so you have to push the hard drive out slightly. Okay, and this is because the SSD is a bit thinner. Alright, let's go ahead and get this in. 
I believe the this is about seven mil millimeters thick and the original drive I think is like nine or 9.5. So old the old hard drives are nine millimeters. All the new SSDs are seven millimeters. I don't know if they have thinner ones, they might, but they're usually this size and form factor. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get this back in. I'm gonna get the connector into place. It's easier to do it while the hard drive is up like this. Flip the latch down, drop that into place, and we're gonna now put the four screws back into the <coughs> hard drive or SSD bracket, all right? Get those four screws back in. Okay, make sure not to push down too hard here, but you do want to make sure the screws are nice and tight because if the screw is loose, it'll eventually wiggle completely out and you can actually damage your computer if it rolls around inside. Okay, so make sure those screws are tight. If you want, you can add a tiny bit of thread locker as well, though they already put thread locker on these screws. If you can see, it has that blue stuff, that's thread locker, okay? But yeah, if you want it to hold extra tight, you can add more thread locker. And again, you want to make sure that those screws are nice and tight. Okay. All right, so that's good. Let's go ahead now and put this thing back together. So we got all of this out. Let's zoom out here. Okay, we're going to move that out of the way. All right, and let's go ahead now and put back the bottom cover. <clears throat> again, it's very important that you get this into place first. So if you're working on this normally, um, you'll actually remove the keyboard first, press and hold the power button 15 seconds, and then you'll remove this. So that way you don't have any risk of damaging these hinges. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the cable out with my finger like this and then thread it through. Okay. You have to kind of look from the side to make sure that it's going in the right way. Okay. And then you can kind of lift it up and open it and double check that it's going in. Okay, it looks like it's going in there, so that should be good. All right, now we just drop this down, click all this stuff back down into place. All right, work your way around, make sure it clicks all in all the way around. Okay, get all the edges, and there we go. Let's go ahead now and put back all the screws. So I'm gonna start with all the silver screws for the that are underneath the CD drive, just so we don't forget. Okay. Here we go. Last one here. All right, so we got those three screws in. Let's go ahead now and put the hard drive, or sorry, the optical disc drive back in. Again, you can get an adapter to convert it to um, a hard drive slot or you can even put another SSD in there two and a half inch SATA or they have adapters for other types of drives But anyways, let's go ahead and get this um, Keep in mind though that this slot is only for SATA type drives So any adapter you get will be SATA anyway, so you don't need to um, Get one for an SSD unless you just want it to be future proof if you want to move the SSD to a new computer later um, but yeah, it'll only take the SATA, um, I guess you call it protocol, I don't know. Um, so they have M SATA, they have M.2 SATA, and they probably have other SATA, like mini SATA and all this other stuff. But those are harder to find. It's not clipping. No, this side didn't clip in right, so let's go ahead and take this back out. Make sure we clip that in. There we go. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah, so there's all different types of SATA drives that technically would work as long as they just reroute the pins properly to fit the, the SATA port for this optical drive slot. So keep that in mind. All right. So now we have all the screws in that we need for opening and closing it safely. So technically you can just open and close it right now. <clears throat> but we're gonna go ahead and get all these screws in. Okay, and the last four from the bottom. Then we're gonna flip it over, put the keyboard back, and then put the battery and power it up. I'll actually show you how to boot from a Windows installer, just in case. Um, 
After that, it's pretty self-explanatory. Windows kind of guides you through how to get everything installed and all these settings that you want. All right, so I got that. And last screw here for the bottom. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and reinstall the keyboard. I'm gonna flip this computer over. Okay, lift this thing back up. Here you can see the optical disk drive, so let's go ahead and reconnect that as well. Let me actually zoom in so you can see the reconnecting of the keyboard and that cable. But basically it's the same thing. Make sure this latches up. If you can, you can grab the blue tab instead of the cable itself, and that will help you guide it. All right, there you go. And then once you get that in, flip the latch down. All right, we're gonna get the keyboard connector. Same thing, make sure the latch is up. This one, you can't really grab the blue tab, so you have to hold from here. It goes in slightly at an angle, like up, like this. Okay. And then wiggle it. You'll see the wings go past those little raised white parts of the slot. And then once you got that, you can go ahead and flip the latch down. Oh, I should put the screws back in. It's going to make it a little more tricky, but this one you can actually, because the cable's so long, you can flip it forward. But um, yeah, you don't want to forget those screws that are underneath here. So let's go ahead and put those back. So we got this one up in the corner. Okay, got this one right here. There's one underneath the keyboard cable. So I'm going to have to move that out of the way and get that in down there. Doing it the lazy way. I should have just taken the keyboard out, but it's okay. All right. And last two, this one. This design is nice because the keyboard cable is so long. So you can actually maneuver it really well, as you can see. You don't want to get more creases into the cable, though. Excuse me. Because you can damage it that way, so... All right, we got all the screws in. Let's go ahead and get the keyboard back in. So we're gonna flip it over, and just like the opposite of before, we're gonna slide this part in first. Okay, make sure all of these little legs go under. All right, once you got that, it helps again to pull the middle up and then work your way along the sides first. So just like this. All right, once you get that clicked in, you can go along the top and click everything in, and we're good to go. We're gonna close this up. Let's put the battery back in. All right, the battery goes in backside first like this, swing it downwards and then push it down into place. It should just click, wait, is it not going in right? There we go. All right, and it clicks into place. Flip this back over. Let's go ahead and power this thing back up. And we're gonna install Windows 10 on there. So we're gonna go ahead and get a bootable USB. This, I have Windows 10 installed on it. If you need to know how to create a bootable Windows 10 USB, just let me know. I'll send a link for that video. Um, you can actually create it from Microsoft for free, um, but you do need a USB, I think, at least 16 gigs. All right, so let's go ahead and plug this in. We're going to power it up. And what we're going to do is we're going to press F12 to boot into um, the device boot option, so we're pressing F12 right now, and it says preparing one-time boot menu up here. Here you can see the boot menu, um, and we're going to boot to the my SanDisk Cruiser, which is my USB flash drive, okay? So here you can see, now it will go through. If you only put Windows 64-bit, it won't give you these options. It'll just automatically load this, so keep that in mind. Yours most likely won't show those options, because most people will never install Windows 10 32-bit, I just have it on there in case somebody has a super old computer and wants me to install that. All right. Of course, you can also double check the CD drive is working well. Push the button. You can see it popped out. All right. And that's pretty much all there is. You can see it's doing the install. Um, then just go through. Actually, I'll go through what I normally do. It's like this. Usually, I don't even use the trackpad or the touchpad or trackpad. I just press tab three times. Press enter to go to next. Press enter to install now. It goes through this and then I usually will do the custom setup just to make sure there's no partitions on the drive. It's brand new so it shouldn't have any partitions, should be completely unallocated. 
um, but I like to check it just to be safe. So we'll let this setup start. It says setup starting. And then we'll go through. So let me actually, here you go. So I press spacebar to say accept all the terms, and then I press enter again. Then I go down arrow to go to custom install, enter. You can see unallocated. Uh, there's a one terabyte drive, but it does show up 931.5 gigs. That's normal. And then I'll just press, uh, press enter, and it will automatically create the partitions it needs. All right. And then after that, it'll go through the thing of creating your account and all of those things. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, again, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others. If it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this. Bye.